this go ahead and and Kragla, so you may you made the slides available for the second part in in chat there's a link in chat to slides for the second part thank you um i can also put the the link for the part one actually uh if anyone is looking for them okay so hi everyone and welcome to this uh second part of the lecture on uh, opcovano homology uh, so last week I told you about how to uh, to construct Otkovanov homology for links, following uh, the work of Oswald, Rasmussen, and Sabo, uh, using a chronological cobordism as introduced by uh, Putura. And so my plan for today is to explain to you how to extend this to tangles. Uh, and so this is this will be uh, about a joint work with uh, Chris Putira. Um, I would like to first quickly remind you uh, what happened last time so that uh, we are all on the same page. Um, okay, so usually for Kovanov homology, uh, what you do is you start with some, some link, uh, you smooth all crossings in uh, one way or another, then you build some cobordism between these smoothings, and this gives you a, a cube of resolution and the phases of this cube of resolution commutes because uh, if you follow one pass or the other, you are basically exchanging distant saddle points between cobordism. Uh, so that if you apply some TQFT on this, you get a commutative cube of vector space. Uh, and in particular, by introducing some signs, you can turn it into an empty commutative cube. So you get a complex. Um, if you do it in uh, for some particular rank to Frobenius algebra, you get Kovanov homology, which is a link invariant. Um, in the odd case, you want to, to replace the, this rank to TQFT by an odd TQFT. Um, basically, the idea was that uh, in, in the usual case, if you have a collection of M circle, it is sent to some polynomial algebra. And in the odd case, you want to replace this polynomial algebra by an exterior algebra. So now variable and decommute. And uh, we realize that uh, if you do this, then somehow you don't have a TQFT anymore because it's not defined on usual cobordism. But you need some cobordism with an extra structure that we call chronological cobordism. And this extra structure is basically that you have a morphed function so that elements are at different height in your cobordism starting uh, at the bottom at height zero and um, arriving at height one uh, at the top, uh, so that you cannot have two saddles at the same height. Moreover, you also need to give some uh, orientation for the saddles that I draw as an arrow that, that would be like in one direction or the other. Um, basically, when you, when you have uh, a merge cobordism, it coincides with some uh, exterior product in your algebra, so the orientation don't matter. But when you have a split like this, then it is morally multiplication on the left by some degree one element. So that um, if you exchange two splits, you get a sign because you are basically exchanging, uh, co commuting variable in your exterior algebra. And this is uh, somehow the, the important feature of this odd cobordism. So uh, if you do again this, this construction of the cube of resolution, but using uh, this time this optic UFT, you get a cube where the phase can commute or anti commute. But one of the main results of, of, of Oswald, Rasmussen, and Sabo is that you can always uh, twist the sign at each edge such that you get an anti commutative cube. Then uh, it gives you a complex, and it appears that the homotopy type of this uh, complex is a link invariant and does not depend on the choice of signs that you have made. So this was uh, last time. Uh, and now if we want to, uh, to extend this to tangles, uh, following the same idea as Kovanov did for in, in the usual case, we need to construct um, an odd version of uh, an arc algebra. So let's do that. Uh, and for this, I need to uh, put some definition. So first, let me call uh, mn flat tangle. 
uh, a tangled diagram with no crossing, so the strand cannot intersect each other, connecting two endpoints at the bottom to two endpoints at the top. So I consider only a uh, tangle with an even number of starting points and an even number of ending points. Um, of course, what, I'm, what I will tell you can generalize to uh, arbitrary tangles, but it requires more work and it is more difficult, so I don't want to do it here. Um, also, I will always consider these flat tangles up to planar isotopy fixing the endpoints. So I can move the strands around uh, at the condition of not creating new intersections. And in particular, I am interested in a special subset of flat tangles that we call crossingless matchings. So they start with zero points and end up with two endpoints. So they form just some semicircle like this that we call arc. And for example, when n equal two, you just have two crossingless matching, this one and this one. And I am also, uh, I would also fix a notation, one n for the identity tangle, where I have two n vertical strands. Good. Okay. Now, when I have such a flat tangle, I can do some uh, operation. One thing that I can do is flip them horizontally. Uh, so I notice uh, with a bar above. And moreover, here, if I have a crossingless matching, a flat tangle and another crossingless matching with the same number of uh, starting and ending points, I can glue them together such that I get a closed one manifold like this. So you put the crossingless matching, uh, crossingless matching at the bottom, your flat tangle, and then the flip of the second crossingless matching. And so I get a, a collection of circles. And whenever I have a collection of circles, I can apply my odd CQFT. So we define the space OF for a flat tangle T as the direct sum over all the way you can close your tangle T by crossingless matching of the space you get by applying uh, your OTQFT on this closed uh, tangle. So uh, in the example of the tangle T I have here, I would have two direct summons uh, where I could have either this bottom or uh, this bottom. Um, and, 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 and these spaces will be the, the base space that we will use to construct the odd arc algebra. And so what we want is to define a composition law for them. So whenever I have two flat tangles, T and T prime, with compatible uh, number of starting and ending points, I can glue them together just by stacking them uh, on top of each other. And I always read from bottom to top. Um, so I can compose them. And so somehow I want to, to have a, a multiplication rule that take an element in the space associated to T an element in the space associated to T prime and send it to the space associated to the gluing of T prime and T. Uh, and this will be the base for um, defining our multiplication rule. So to do that, uh, we, we want to use our optic with T. And so we need to construct some cobordism, even some uh, chronological cobordism. So let me take again two, two such uh, flat tangles. And now I fix some uh, crossingless matching for closer. So the first thing I do is uh, I take my first angle at the bottom, T, and I close it with A and B bar. So this is a closed one manifold, so a collection of circles. And then I take the union with T prime closed by B and C bar. So here I have two uh, collection of, uh, of circles. Uh, and I put them next to each other. But, uh, and I want to, to put this one uh, on top of this one. And if I look at the picture I get, uh, because here you have B bar and here you have B, you will see that at the center of this picture, you have a collection of symmetric arc, like this. One, one pair of such arc for each arc in B. And so what I do is uh, I construct a cobordism by putting a saddle over each of the pair, each pair of symmetric arc, like this, so that I arrive there. And I do this uh, from right to left. So I start with the, the arc having its uh, right uh, ending point uh, at the rightmost position, and then the second one, and so on, and I stack them uh, above each other on top of each other. 
And also because I have um, I need a chronological cobordism, I need to orient it these um, these saddles, and I orient everything upward. So of course these are arbitrary choices. You could uh, orient uh, like you wish, or uh, construct your uh, your saddle in any order you want, and you get different composition rules. But I want to fix one so that everything uh, uh, is fixed for the talk. And so, for example, uh, I consider T prime and T to be the identity tangle on fourth trend. And uh, I think I, I fix this crossingless matching. So here I have A, I have T, which is the identity. I have uh, B bar, I have B, I have again, uh, I have T prime, which is again the identity. And finally, I have C bar. And so I construct a cobordian by first putting a saddle here. So I arrive there, then I put a saddle there, and I arrive there, and I can just contract. Uh, and so if you do this, we have constructed a chronological cobordism from this guy to this guy. And so this is exactly the same story as uh, in the usual case, except that now uh, we have to, choice, to choose an order for the saddles and an orientation. And then we can use this to define the composition rule by uh, simply applying the at uh, TQFT on this cobordy that we have created. And because uh, last time I explained to you that uh, this at TQFT is a graded monoidal functor, this disjoint union here coincides with the uh, graded tensor product there. So that makes sense. Uh, and so this gives give me a composition rule for element having the same closure on top and bottom. And if the closure are not um, compatible, I just declare that the uh, multiplication is zero. Okay, um, in particular, I can consider um, what happened with the identity tangle, and then uh, this gives me an internal composition law. Uh, and so this means that I have uh, an algebra if I consider only the space uh, given by the identity tangle and uh, the, the multiplication law corresponding by identity tangle with identity tangle. Uh, and this algebra comes with a, a collection of idempotent given by the product of the, the unit of, of the, um, the external product of unit in your super Frobenius algebra um, for each crossingless matching. Moreover, when, whenever you have a, a, a flat tangle, you can also like you can build this space OFT, and uh, this composition law gives you a, a bimodal structure over OHM OHM, because composing uh, the, the tangle T with the identity tangle preserves the shape of T. Uh, so let's try to, to do some computation with this uh, odd arc algebra. So let's say that I have an element Z, an element Y, and an element X uh, in the space corresponding to this different closure, uh, yeah, closure of the identity tangle. Then I have two ways to uh, compose these three elements. First, is that first thing that I could do is start by multiplying Z with Y. If you do this, you will see that here you have a merge and then a second merge. So this map here is just multiplication of Z and Y. So I have exterior product of Z and Y. And then I can multiply uh, this, this ZY with X. Here I will have uh, a merge and then a split. So when I have a split, I multiply on the left with some variable, let me call it S. So I, I, I arrive to this guy, S, Z, Y, X. If I go, uh, if I try to first multiply Y and X together, what happens here is that again, I have a merge and a split. So I get, uh, I multiply on the left by S, so I get S, Y, X. And then I can multiply with Z. And so this is just multiplication, because I have merge, merge, it is just multiplication by Z. So I get Z, S, Y, X. And here you can observe that these two elements are equal, only up to sign. And this sign is give, given by exchanging the variable Z and the variable S. So this commutes up to uh, minus one to the degree of Z. So this means that 
of composition uh, law for odd arc algebra is not associative. Um, and in general, uh, you, you can observe that this sign will depend on the degree of z, the shape of the underlying tangles t prime prime t prime and t, so the underlying tangles in each of these spaces, and also on the closure, so a, b, c, d. Uh, so it depends on a lot of parameters. Uh, moreover, because splits have degree minus one, they multiply by some variable of degree minus one on the left. It also means that the, the, the old arc algebra is not graded for or the grading that, co that control the, the commutativity. Because when I multiply two elements, I can increase the degree. This is what happened here. Um, okay. So, but maybe this is not a problem. I mean, wh why, would you, why should we care about associativity? Well, the thing is, uh, in the, the even case, one of the nice property of this, uh, these spaces is that whenever uh, I have two composable tangles, I construct the corresponding space and I do the tensor product over the arc algebra, uh, then I get an isomorphism induced by the, the composition law of this space and this space to the, um, the space associated to the, the gluing of the tangles. And so I have this nice isomorphism. And this is what allow you uh, to really split the, the, the complex for Kovanov homology into a smaller part and, uh, and, and this kind of nice gluing property. Um, and the thing is to define this tensor product uh, of bimodule over an algebra, what you do is that you declare that this element is equal to this element. And so it is depend, it is de it is depend on uh, some associativity. So if you don't have associativity, it does not make sense to do a tensor product over a, a, a non-associative algebra. It, it is not well defined a priori. So what we need is to fix this. Uh, and so whenever you have a problem, probably that the first thing you should do is look into the literature and see if we can find something similar. Um, and if you look, look a bit into uh, non-associative stuff, what you can find is, for example, um, alternativity. So y, y, x is the same as y, y, x, and, and the same thing in the, for the other case. Um, okay, our, our algebra is alternative. However, this does not help because it still does not allow you to, to define a, a tensor product. Um, you could also look into something like A infinity, but I don't think uh, our algebra is an A infinity algebra, at least not from uh, what I understand from A infinity. So can we find something else? And now I will tell you about something uh, that I learned from uh, Putura and Chumakovic, because they started thinking about this non-associativity issue of the odd arc algebra uh, before I entered into play. And what they found is that yes, there is an example of similar phenomenon in the phenomena in the literature. And one example is the octonions. Um, so if you want to learn more about, about octonions, you can just look at the Wikipedia page. And, and, and there you can read that it is not associative. It is only associative up to sign. With, for example, aj, ijl is minus, one, minus ijl. Uh, so this looks like the kind of, of, of things that we have. And moreover, it is z2 times z2 times z2 graded, where each imaginary variable is in a different uh, degree. And the thing is, Albuquerque and Majid uh, observe that this degree control your non-associativity, control your associativity. Uh, and so they introduce the notion of quasi-associative algebra. Uh, which I think you could also call uh, graded associativity. Uh, so let me tell you about uh, their solution. And for this, I need uh, to recall to you what is a, a trico cycle on a group. So for a group G, a trico cycle is a map that eats three elements in G and gives you an invertible scalar. And the cocycle property means that the, the derivative of this map should be uh, one. And by derivative, I mean the alternating sum where you uh, somehow compose each pair of elements that you count. This is a classical definition that you can find, uh, for example, if you do 
Hoshi Komonji uh, and, and stuff like that. And so they, they define for um, the notion of G-graded quasi-associative algebra to be a, a G-graded algebra with a trico cycle, alpha that we call the associator, such that uh, the algebra is associative up to some invertible scalar given by the associator and that depends on the degree of the elements. And they show that the octonion is indeed a, a Z2 times Z2 times Z2 graded quasi-associative algebra. Uh, maybe you are wondering, but why do we need this um, trico-cycle condition? Well, uh, what it does is that it ensures that if you have a four-term composition, well, when you have a four-term composition, there are basically two ways that you can uh, reparenthesize it following either this path or this path. And the three cycle condition tells you exactly that this path is the same as this one, because you have this, this times this times this, times inverse of this times inverse of this, this one. This is exactly this condition. And you probably have already seen this kind of picture before, because this is exactly uh, the um, uh, pentagon relation in a monoidal category. And so this suggests that uh, you can generalize this notion of uh, quasi-associative algebra by using category theory. But before doing this, I want to make one more observation. Uh, uh, let's get back to our old art algebra. Uh, I, I told you that the non-associativity is controlled by the shape of the tangles, the underlying tangles, and also the, uh, the closure by the crossingless matching. And so it is suggests that we should actually not look at um, objects graded by a group, because the first thing is that um, tangles do not form a group, they are not invertible. And, and moreover, because somehow our algebra splits nicely uh, by the, by the idem, idempotent, depending on the crossing of matching, all this suggests that we should not grade things by a group, but by a category, where the object would coincide with this uh, idempotent. So let, let me define the notion of grading category. So a, a grading category is just a small category with a trico cycle. And here, trico cycle for a category means that it eats a triplet of composable maps and gives you invertible scalar. And then the, 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 the co-cycle condition is the same as before, except that you eat a path of length four. So you just look at the, compo at the map that you can compose together. Um, okay, and so when you have such a, a grading category, you can start doing um, a bit of algebra and define notion of uh, C-graded uh, K module, where K is your ground, thing, ground ring that we have fixed. Uh, and so a C graded K module is um, uh, a module that decomposed as a direction over the morphism in your uh, category. So usually if you work uh, with an object graded over a group, you would take a direction over the elements in your group. Uh, and, and one way to have both definition under the same roof is to look at the de-looping of your group. So the de-looping of your group is just the category with a single abstract object. And the endomorphic space of this abstract object is your group. And then it coincides with the, the usual notion like uh, of z-graded object, for example. Uh, and then you have a notion of a graded map, uh, which are just the map that preserve the, the degree, the grading. So this is uh, as, as usual. And because our grading category is equipped with this uh, trico cycle, we can turn the category of C graded modules uh, into a monoidal category. And so for this, I define the graded tensor product uh, as a usual tensor product, but elements have deg the degree given by um, the composition. So if you do the tensor product of uh, X and Y, his degree is the composition of the degree of Y and, and X, X into this. Uh, category C. So of course this makes sense only if the, the elements are composable. So uh, you, you can only take tensor product of elements uh, which, um, which have a composable degree. So this is uh, um, 
some of the extra structure you get by working uh, with a category instead of, say, a, a group or a monolith. Uh, and then, of course, you get a coherence isomorphism directly given uh, to you uh, by this uh, three cycle from the, the grading category. And, and because it is a, a cycle, uh, you will respect the uh, pentagonal relation in your monoidal category for free. It's already encoded there. And also, you need to define a unit object. Uh, and you define it by taking the direction over the object in your grading category of uh, one code. One copy of your so you have one copy of your ground ring for each object and it is graded uh, by the identity on this, uh, this object. So uh, yeah, so now you need, you need your, your unit object uh, could be like infinite dimensional if you're grading category as infinitely many object uh, and, and things like this. Uh, and maybe you are wondering, but where are the left and right unitors? Uh, and the thing is, uh, I also learned this from uh, Kutira and Shumakovich is that you can uh, actually define them from the, uh, the associator in your grading category. Or you could uh, enhance the definition of grading category by uh, also asking from a left and right unitors. Uh, but uh, to, to, to keep things simple, uh, I will just say that you can derive them from the associator. Um, OK. Uh, and now the cool thing is that whenever you have a monoidal category, you can do algebra. So you can define notion of um, an algebra in this category. You can define notion of module in this category, and so on. And so that, this is how we will define uh, what is a C-graded algebra. So a C-graded algebra is a monoid object in the category of C-graded space with this uh, graded tensor product. And uh, maybe this tells you nothing, but you can make this very concrete. So a C-graded algebra is uh, an algebra that decomposes into direct uh, into spaces uh, corresponding to the morphism C, of course. And it has a degree preserving multiplication. So when you multiply elements, uh, it should be sent to an element with the composed degree, or 0 if the degree are not composable. Uh, and then you need also a unit element for each object in your reading category. And it should respect uh, the associativity uh, controlled by your associator. And uh, for the unit, you, you have similar things, but with your left and right unitors. So basically, it's an algebra uh, where the associativity is controlled by your associator, which depends on the degree of the element. Um, and, and for example, you can take, the, again, the de-looping of a group, and then it uh, matches with the, the notion of quasi-associative algebra of Abu Kurkwe and Maggi. Ragua, I have a question about this slide. In the third line from the bottom, you have the formula one sub i of x is lambda identity y x, x. And when you have x one sub x, so in x one sub x, are this different x? Is one oh, yes, sorry. sorry. So the small x here is in the algebra. Yes. The big x here is uh, an object in your grading category. So this is the unit in the algebra corresponding to the object x, mm -hmm. and this is just any element. So x is an element of a sub g, which and a sub g, g goes from something like capital X to capital Y. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. OK. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with module um, or by module. But because we are interested uh, with by module, let's do it for a by module. Uh, and what you do is you do exactly the same thing uh, as, as usual, except that whenever you would use associativity, you put the associator. And that's basically it. And, and same thing for the unit. And so this, is, this would be the same definition as for a, a usual bimodule, except that now you have this, uh, this twist by the associator and, and, and unit. Uh, and you can also define notion of a map between integrated bimodule by simply asking that it commutes with the left and right action. And, and you can do it because somehow, because your map here uh, should also preserve the, the C degree. The, the C degree. And so if you do this, you get an abelian category of C graded bimodules that I will write by what C A to A1. Uh, but what we are, we are interested in um, doing tensor product of bimodule. 
So uh, what happens if I take two bimodules, M prime and M, uh, with compatible uh, with, with with a left action and a right action on the same algebra? What we want to do is take the tensor product of these two guys uh, uh, as as gridded space and equip it with some um, H3A1 bimodule structure. So I need to define a, a left and right action. So for the left action, I'm looking for a map going from A3 tensor product M prime M to M prime M and something similar for the right action. Uh, you cannot just define it like this. You, you need to change something. So what you can do is use your associator to go from there to there. And then here you can apply the, the, us, the use the structure of bimodule of M prime to make A3 act on it. And so you arrive there. And this is how you define the left action on your tensor product. And you do the same thing for the right action. You just need to be careful because here you have associator inverse and here you have associator because uh, you go from one kind of parenthesis to, to another kind. And explicitly what it means is if you act with Y and M prime M, it is the same as if you act with Y and M, pri M prime and then to the tensor product and you twist with your associator. And so if you do this, uh, you get uh, a bimodule. And this works in general for any, in any monoidal category. Uh, but what we want is to take a tensor product over an algebra, not uh, over the ground ring. Uh, and so the, the, the usual way you can do it is to define it as a uh, Tisco equalizer. And so concretely what you do is uh, you take a tensor product uh, over a ground ring, uh, modulo this relation here. So usually for, uh, in, 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 in the usual case, you, you would not have this element there. So you just add it, just, you just twist by the associator. So you do the, the, the natural thing to do. And then you can show that uh, it gives you again a, a bimodule. And again, this works in any monoidal category. Um, okay, so this is the framework in which we want to work. But now, uh, if we want to show that our, our algebra is uh, graded associative, we need to construct a grading category. So let's do this. Let's construct a grading category for odd, odd arc algebra. Like I hinted before, objects should be crossingless matching because they give you the idempotence in your algebra. Then for the home space, uh, we know that what we need is uh, the shape of the underlying tangle and the z degree. So the map should be uh, the, the datum of a flat tangle and an element in z. And actually, uh, if you look uh, for the, uh, at, at what happens when you compose this element, the issue was that we were exchanging uh, splits with, uh, with stuff. And so somehow, what you really need is not the, the shape of the whole flat tangle, but you just need to reduce flat tangle. So you can get rid of all three loops, because these three loops will not give you a split when you do surgery, because there are three loops, so you don't do surgery over there, then. And so this will be our uh, morphism. And finally, you need to define a composition rule. So of course, for the tangled part, what you should do is just do the gluing, and then you reduce by removing the free loops. So this is easy. And for the z degree part, you should, you should take the sum, of course, but you need to do something more. And if you remember, I told you that the odd arc algebra is not graded over z, because when you multiply element, you can shift the degree, and this shift coincides with the, uh, the number of splits in the chronological cobordism that you use to construct the multiplication law. Because each split uh, in this multiplication law multiply by one element, one variable of degree minus one on the left. And so you need to shift your degree by minus the number of splits. And, 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 and this depends on uh, the, the, the shape of, uh, of the tangles again. Gravas, I have a question. So when you compose T and T prime, you have this hat to indicate that you remove all circles. Yes. But this number of circles is unrelated to the number of splits. No. Number of, it's unrelated to the number because of splits. Because there are three loops. The three so loops, yeah, loops, loops, I mean, but so, so uh, that, uh, 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 I mean, you don't touch the three loops when you do surgery, basically. You don't touch the three um, okay. And this, so this number of splits, this is the same shift as the usual shift in which the product of graded H and modules. So when you take the usual 
or is this number of splits and so, so, so WCBA, it's uh, some cobordism? WCBA. Yes, WCBA is the cobordism you use to, um, construct, to define the multiplication yeah. law. And you just count the number of splits, uh -huh. and that's it. Is this related to the degree of the corresponding homomorphism of graded um, Siebeton groups and just the usual model or not? In, is it related to the degree of the, or not because so normally with some, with some degree sheet, that will be number of splits plus the number of merges. Yeah, so it's, I, I think- But, it's but here you just take splits, here we just- take. Yes, because actually the quantum degree, so the, the usual Q degree is a combination of the Z degree and another one, another degree that corresponds to merge. And this is related to the fact that in your first lecture, you kind of, when you had the additional Z degree, you, I think you put together splits and uh, ca caps and, and or merge, merges and caps. So split them into different degrees somehow. And this is related. Yes. You're using yes. splits but not merges. Yes. Here, this is just the degree of the, corresponding to the split. Uh -huh. okay, okay. Uh, because the degree corresponding to the merge somehow does, does do nothing for the associativity. Uh -huh. Exactly. And the quantum degree is, I think, the, the difference between these two degrees or something like this, if I remember correctly. But uh, here I don't want to talk about quantum degree. So here all my degree are just the degree corresponding to uh, the splits and that come for associativity and graded commutativity. And so because we do this trick, uh, now basically by construction uh, our arc algebra will be graded over G and also the space OFT. Uh, and you can show that this composition is associative. This is uh, easy. Uh, and for example, here is a, a, an example of a morphism in this category. So here you have an object, it's a crossing with matching, another one, and the morphism is a flat angle and a, 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 a some P in, in Z. But this is still not a grading category because you need uh, an associator. Uh, so I, I will try to give you an intuition of uh, how to construct this associator. So you want to go from ZYX to ZYX. So here, let, let's look at this picture. Let's say that T prime prime and P prime prime is a degree of Z that you should think as crossed by some uh, crossingless matching. And T prime P prime is a degree of Y. So if you remember last time, I told you that when you have um, some tensor product of elements, you should think of them as in order right and left. So the element on the right is uh, below the element on the left. So if you want, this is uh, ZY, this part here. Then I have this trivalent vertex. This represents a chronological cobordism, uh, and it is a cobordism that you use to define the composition law of Z and Y. Uh, and then here, this T and P, is uh, the degree of X. And this equivalent vertex there is the cobordism that do the multiplication of ZY with X. So this picture on the left really represent the multiplication that you need to do uh, to define this element here. Here on the right, uh, I first have YX. So this is this element below. This is uh, YX, the multiplication of Y and X. And then I multiply by Z. So this is, here is Z and here is the product. And so the associator should tell you how to go from there to there. If you want to do this, the first step is to exchange uh, this and this, to go from there to there. And in terms of cobordism, what you are doing is ex exchanging distant saddles. Because you can think of this guy here as a huge uh, chronological cobordism, and this is another huge chronological cobordism, which are equivalent up to a distant exchange of saddles. And so if you do this, you get a sign. And this sign is my alpha one. And then you still need to exchange this T prime prime, P prime prime, that is Z, with this chronological cobordism. So you get another sign by exchanging this and this. And this is uh, an alpha two. And this is exactly the, the sign in the example I gave you before. Because if you remember, we were exchanging uh, um, the, elem the, the element Z with uh, some element given by the split in this product. So this is our associator. Uh, and, and the proposition is that this is give you a grading category. So the, the only thing you need to check here 
is that this associator uh, respect the, the co-cycle property and basically it is followed by consistency of the, the category of host cohorts. So uh, this basically follows from the, the work of Putura. Um, and, and then by construction, our, our arc algebra is G graded and uh, the, the odd space are uh, by module. And then you can show easily that the tensor product of uh, my, my, uh, my, my by module of our algebra is isomorphic to the, the space given by the growing of the tangles. Uh, and the proof is exactly the same as in the uh, original Kovanov paper because we, are, we have already taken care of all the difficulty by uh, defining this framework of uh, G-gridded stuff. So, uh, okay, we are done here. We are happy because now we can uh, do um, tensor, we can do tensor product of flat tangles and, and everything works just fine. But the thing is in general, you, you are not interested uh, into computing invariant of flat tangle. You want, um, uh, you want actual tangle. Um, uh, 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 and so to do that, you should work with um, resolution of tangles. And for example, if you have a single crossing tangle, you want to define uh, the space associated to this as uh, the mapping cone of this space, so this is the zero smoothing of this crossing, to this space. This is the, 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 the one smoothing over this chronological coordinate. So here you should put a, an orientation, but I, I drop the orientation to keep the, the things uh, uh, less uh, heavy. Uh, and so that's how you want to define the, uh, and so mapping cone here just means that you put this guy in homological degree one, and this is your differential. So you want to do this. However, you will quickly see that if you try to do this, you will have an issue. And the issue is that elements in this space are in a degree uh, where the tangle part is of this shape. And elements in this space are in a degree where, uh, where tangles are of this shape. So if you want a gridded map from here to there, the only thing you can do is a zero map. Because they, they lie in a different uh, degree. Uh, and so this is, a, this is a problem because uh, then you will have problem to, to glue together uh, these mapping codes. So what you want to do is apply some grading shift functor so that you will push elements there uh, or put elements there into the same degree as elements here. And then this map will become uh, graded. So what you could try is just say, okay, let's declare that element here are now shifted. Because this is basically what you would have if you were working with a usual Z degree uh, algebra. Now the thing is, if you do this, you will also modify how the, the associator will evaluate on this guy. And so this guy will not be uh, graded by module anymore because it will not respect the graded associativity property. So what we need to do is twist the left and right action on this guy such that uh, it becomes associative for the new degree of the element. If you want, this is a bit similar uh, to what you get when you work like in a homological algebra or with um, super module. When you shift super module or DG module, you, you need to twist the left action. But so here we will have something similar, but where we twist both left and right action. And so let me introduce to you the notion of grading shift system. Here, I will stay a bit vague. I don't want to enter too much into the details. Um, I, I, I want to try to give you an idea of how it works. So let me fix a grading category. Uh, and so a shifting system is, is, is a datum of uh, some monoid. I with, uh, with the bullet uh, composition low and some neutral element E. And for each element in my monoid, I want to define uh, some map that take element, uh, um, that, that, that take morphism in my grading category and send them to order morphism, fixing the object. And you want to do this in uh, a compatible way with the composition. So whenever you have 
to, to, to morphism in your grading category C, you can shift both of them by some phi i or phi j, depending on element in your, grid, in your shifting monoid. Uh, and then you can compose them to get a, a morphism here in, in your grading category. Or what you could do is you first uh, compose your element in C, and then you shift by the composition in your monoid by uh, the, 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 the composition of the element j and i. And you want this to commute. Uh, the intuition here is that the, the grading category uh, is, is G. So uh, the, 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 the degree, the, the morphism are like flat tangle, reduced flat tangle and, and uh, some element in Z. And the degree shift should be by cobordism between flat tangle. So these are what we call a cornered cobordism because you have some boundary, vertical boundary along uh, the, the ending and starting point of the tangles. And so when when you have two flat tangles and you shift one of them by a cobordism and then the other one by another cobordism, and then you, you, you glue the resulting tangle together, you want this to be compatible with you first glue the tangles together, you glue the cornered cobordism together, and then you shift everything. And also I should mention that this uh, shifting map here are actually defined of subset of morphism. Because for example, if you shift by some uh, cobordism, you can all only shift uh, uh, morphism where the underlying tangles is compatible with the schools of this cornered cobordism. Okay, so this is what I would call a shifting system. So, so Greg, one, so this D sub i, they are subsets of the set of forms from capital X to capital Y? Yeah. Yes, so if you want here, the i would be all morphism whose, um, whose tangled part is the reduced version of some uh, source of a cobordism, this corner. So for every element little i of the monoid capital I, you have a yes. subset d sub i of Holmes, but yes. a map not into di but into Holmes, map into Holmes. And I want to point on, point on something very important here, is that this shifting system is, so, is something um, not internal of C. Because when you work with um, stuff that are like Z-gridded, when you do a shift, the shifting functor for a Z-gridded object uh, shift by element of Z. So somehow you shift uh, by looking at element of your, uh, your group as um, element acting on the group itself. So here somehow what you want is something acting on your uh, grading category. So it's like an, 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 an external structure because uh, what you want to do is shift by cobordism and cobordism are not tangles. So it's like an extra layer of structure. And so when we, you have this grading shift system, you can construct the grading shift functor uh, inside your category of graded uh, space simply by sending element of degree G to element of degree phi I, G. And if uh, elements are not in uh, this uh, subset, then they are sent to zero. So now your grading shift functor can uh, reduce the size of your space. But if you want to not do this, you could take like a direct sum of shift and, and stuff like that to, to compensate. And, and it should be the identity of morphism. And of course you want to do all this in a compatible way with the associator. So you also need to put some compatibility isomorphism. So whenever you have uh, two modules, two, two, two graded space, uh, you can shift them by different elements and then do the tensor product. And you want this to be isomorphic to uh, what would, it, would you get if you do first the tensor product and then you shift by the composition. Uh, and so you need to introduce some collection of, uh, of natural isomorphism. And in all cases, these natural isomorphisms are just given by uh, some multiplication by some invertible scalar, depending on uh, y, on, on j and i, and the degree of the element. Uh, and these th th isomorphisms should be compatible with your associator uh, using this hexagonal relation, which is very similar to what you would have. Uh, this is similar to, for example, functor between monoidal category. So it's uh, not an exotic current relation. And Okay, so if you do all this, you can start uh, thinking, okay, how can we now use this to shift by modules? Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is shift by modules. And you, need, you still need to, to do something more, one thing more, and it is to assume that the algebra object, so all the C-graded algebra that we are going to work with, 
uh, should be supported in degree uh, contained in the subset here corresponding to the neutral element. And, and really, this, ac this actually corresponds to, uh, to the center of the end space of the object in your grading category. This is a bit technical, but somehow what, what, the point here is that you need to, uh, to restrict your algebra object to nicely behaved algebra object. Um, so for example, in our case, all the algebra object should be supported uh, by uh, tangles, which are basically identity up to removing three loops. And so if you do, and, and, and if you suppose, if you assume this, then you can start uh, um, to construct shifted by modules. So if you have a bimodule M and you want to shift it by phi i, you need to define a, a map from A2 times phi i m to phi i m. So the way you do this is by using this assumption that I made up there. So A2 is isomorphic to uh, A2 shifted by the neutral element in your monoid because of this. Then you can apply your uh, coherence isomorphism to go from there to there. Here you can apply your usual uh, multiplication in M because M is an A2 A1 by module. You arrive there. And now because E is the neutral element in your monoid, in your shifting monoid, this is equal to the shift of M. And so this defines your map. And that's how I want to define the left action for a shifted by module. And you have something similar for the right action. And explicitly what it means is if you want to uh, act with Y on uh, a sh an element shifted by I, then it is the same as if you simply act with Y on M and you twist by the scalar uh, given by this compatibility isomorphism. And the same thing on the right. And, uh, and if you do this, you can show that uh, the isomorph, the, the, the natural isomorph, the, 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 sorry, the morphism you get here uh, is a morphism created by modules. Uh, and, and let me look at other, an example. So for example, the grading category could be Z, the delooping of Z. And then, like I said, you can do a grading shift also by Z. So now here you have some kind of internal grading shift. And your compatibility, but, and here I want graded commutative things like in homological algebra. And then your comp compatibility uh, isomorphism uh, is given by, uh, by this number. And, 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 and this is actually something already known and, and you have something similar also for uh, super modules. And, and, and basically this is what, what I told you. It is this, this, this fact that you get a, a minus sign depending on the degree of the element uh, when you act on the left on a shifted by module on a shifted uh, super by module. So we can recover the, this kind of phenomena, that's what I mean. Um, and so now what we want is grading, what we want are grading shift uh, in G. And so like I said, what we want is to, to do um, grading shift by uh, chronological cobordism with corners. So uh, again, here you should put orientation, but I, I brought them for simplicity. Uh, and the, 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 the composition law for, for this uh, shifting system is just gluing of cobordism. And all coherence isomorphism, you can compute them again by doing similar diagram as I did for the associator. And it is compatible with the associator basically by consistency of the uh, category of cobordism. And, and you can study it as a uh, shifting system. It has a lot of nice property. You can also do shift only in the Z degree part and they are and make them compatible together. Uh, you can also, and if you remember last time I told you about change of chronology that allow you to relate uh, somehow different uh, chronological cobordism and, and you, get, you, get, you get like natural isomorphism between the gradient shift functor if you have ch change of chronology. Uh, you can also vertically compose the shifting functor because you can basically glue uh, on top of each other cornered cobordism if this, if this is compatible. So what you already have here is some kind of two shifting system. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, you can look into a paper, we formalize this a bit. Uh, and, and also vertical sh shift uh, are invert invertible somehow, which is kind of, of cool. Uh, but okay, so now the point is because we have this shifting system, we can go back to our uh, tangle, and now you, you define the, the complex associated to an elementary tangle as the mapping cone as before, except that you shift the source by this cobordism. 
and then it will be compatible. Uh, it will give you a graded map. And in general, if you have a big tangle, you can just define it as a tensor product of all these uh, small uh, elementary tangles. And then you have a similar definition for the, the other or, uh, elementary tangle, and you just need to put some, uh, you need to, to reverse some things, but uh, it's similar. Um, and, and okay, and you, what you can also do is uh, build some cube of resolution, but you need to be careful because you need to shift all the spaces at the edge uh, of, of your cube to put them all in the same G degree. And you need to play with the change of chronology to somehow normalize the, the, the first normalize the degree before applying the map associated to the edge. So it is a bit complicated, but uh, you, you can do it and then you get like a commutative cube or an anti-commutative cube. And, and somehow the point here is that the, 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 the sign assignment is already encoded. It, it is directly given to you by uh, all these grading shift and all these graded commutativity property and thing, graded associativity and so on. So you don't need to somehow find a assigned assignment here. Everything will be uh, anti-commutative on the nodes, which I think is, is really cool. Uh, and, and moreover, for a link, it coincides with the usual notion of Otkovan of homology for, uh, from Oswald, Rasmussen and Sabo. Uh, and, and the way you can show this is by, uh, again, by putting your work. And, and basically, because it gives you a sign assignment, it has too much because uh, at the end of the day, it does not depend on the choice of, of signs. Uh, and I know that I'm already out of time, but I just want to conclude uh, on a couple of small remarks. Is that here there is still an issue that we haven't addressed. And the problem is that the maps that realize homotopy between uh, isotopic tangle do not preserve the G gradient. So what it means is that in general, isotopic tangle do not give you isomorphic uh, complex, uh, unless you sh uh, shift by some uh, G degree. So you need to be some kind of global G degree. And uh, I don't think you can like normalize your tangle such that it uh, on, on always works. And, and, and basically the, the issue is with the high master to move. Uh, you can, the way you can fix this is to work not in uh, the category of a graded G graded uh, by module, but to work in some homotopy category of homogeneous map. Uh, but things get more complicated because now the degree of the map are given by the element in your shifting system. And so here you really need like, um, to be able to vertically compose, uh, to vertically compose the grid shift. But like I told you before, what we have is really a two shifting system, so you can do it. Uh, and, and, and so you can really have like a something uh, invariant up to homotopy. Uh, and, and somehow the conclusion of this is that uh, you don't see the G-grading in homology. Because uh, you cannot do homology in uh, this homotopy category because uh, the category of, with homogeneous map is not uh, abelian, but it is uh, on the adjective. And finally, of course, you can also throw in the quantum degree in the recipe, so the usual Q degree of common homology. And you should really think of it as separated from uh, this G-degree that I was telling you about. And everything preserves this Q-degree as usual. So hopefully you still keep this Q grading in homology. So uh, you really have a, a, a bi-graded homology theory. And that's all I wanted to tell you. Sorry for the out of time. Thank you, Gregor, for uh, very Extremely interesting talk. So let's ask questions now. So um, I got a private message from Chris saying to me that I lied to you. So let me look back at this. And I think Chris, you said that here this isomorphism is not graded. That's what you told me. But I think it is graded. Um, so, so when you write down this three cost cycle, so it actually means that you have, um, you can think of it as a three cost cycle in the classifying space of your category. So does it give you an element of H upper three of classifying space with coefficients in K star? Um, so, 
Uh, can you repeat your question? Yeah, yeah, because you you wrote down the Srika cycle, so is it, I mean, for group case and then for the category case, but is it the same as a kind of Srika cycle? For, well, does it give you Srika cycle on the classifying space? So does it give you an element of H upper three of the classifying space of the category with coefficients in K star? I don't know. I haven't thought about this. Yeah, I could also kind of um, ask because if it's indeed the three cost cycle, so I said if it gives an element of H upper three of the classifying space of this category, but the category is very strongly related to flat angles, flat angle cobordisms, you can ask whether this three cost cycle has a topological meaning as perhaps, so perhaps there are some three manifold inside the classifying space of this category, so closed three manifold. Um, or, or maybe a map into, or, or a map into a manifold that gives you that three cycle from the corresponding three, from the corresponding H of three of some three manifold. So my question is already can trace this three cycle to H of three of some three manifold um, um, build out of that classifying space or related to the classifying space. If I understand correctly that this is related to the homology of classifying spaces, but um, I guess I can ask a kind of baby version of this question to look at the associator for the octonians. And so what three manifold does it relate to? Is it some kind of say the S3 modular, there's some kind of quaternion group or some version of quaternion group um, that will give you that cost cycle for octonians. So maybe one can start with the octonians, understand the role of three manifolds there for that three cost cycle, but then look at the case of flat angles and so the category that I'd like to understand better that you build out of flat angles and flat angles and um, the, the well, composition of flat angles. So, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people ask questions as well. I, I have a question. Unfortunately, uh, apologies, it's not going to be very precise, but there, there's uh, co-cycles, three and four co-cycles coming up also in a uh, question of deformations of tensor categories with the davidoff yetter cohomology. And then this has some relation to a algebraic counterpart with uh, by Gerson Haber in the 60s. Are you familiar with this? And I'm wondering, um, like is there, is there a precise relation to the closed cycles you have, which are not, I guess, a deformation of the sort of standard associator, but there's some kind of, is, it, there's a, is there a general cohomology here um, in which you have closed cycles and obstructions, I guess? Uh, or, or is it just that you, I mean, a particular fact about, you know, if you have a group in a three co cycle, then you can d make a well defined associator that you know plays with gradings, it comes from gradings. So, I'm, I'm not really familiar with this kind of, of, of stuff, so I, I don't think I can really answer you. So, for, for, for me here, um, this really this co cycle property is just so that uh, uh, you have this current isomorphism, and that's it. Right, but the, so there's a same a similar cycle property for the coherence. Uh, sorry, the coherence pentagon for associator associativity isomorphisms. When you deform the standard associator, so you take the, I guess, yeah, trivial one or identity or something plus some. Say you want to do the first order some epsilon times and something else, and then you, if you plug that into the coherence pentagon, you get a condition for what that something else is on the, you know, the epsilon term. And this is a co-cycle, just like yours. Mm -hmm. And then the obstruction to getting an epsilon squared term is, um, 
I mean, you can write that down. Uh, and so I, I suppose the point of this is, you know, asking about deforming from an identity associator by some small amount and then kind of extending this to a formal series deformation or, or a finite deformation. So that, that story you ha does, ha I mean, there's a cohomology and then there's, um, yeah, co-cycles, the three co-cycles do exactly classify the um, first order deformations. But what you have is not a deformation yet it still uses a co-cycle. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm trying to figure out what the exact relation is. Okay, um, uh, there might be something I can tell you here uh, that might be related. If, okay, if, if you remember when I constructed the, the odd arc algebra, uh, I made this choice here of like orientation and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, it, it make some choice of orientation and stuff like that. Uh, and, and what I know you can do is uh, then ask a question because um, a priori you get different odd arc algebra. And so you could wonder when are these arc algebra the same? Like isomorphic, uh, and uh, what, what I can tell you is that they are isomorphic uh, whenever the associator are the same, basically. I mean, you mean the uh, co-cycle is the same, or it's the same um, class? So, so, do you, so the the co-cycles, the three co-cycles, you're saying they are one-to-one -one correspondence. If with... the co-cycles are the same up to Cobondorius, uh, uh, no. Yeah, this, this is what I guess what I'm yeah, wondering. So. Something like that. Like, I mean, I, 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 okay, I think if, if, if your associator are the same in homology, then you get the same algebra. I think. So sorry. Um, but let me also just kind of also ask sort of um, not exactly the same question, but I think it would be interesting to just see examples because instead of groups, you pass to monoids and then you pass to categories. So it would be interesting to see the smallest possible examples of a category that doesn't come from a group. So maybe first a monoid and then maybe a category of more, one, more than one object where you can actually have a non-trivial three plus cycle and see what it means. And then also like look at the simplest examples when you have the systems that you call, I think, capital I and some subsets D sub I in form from x to y, so just like look at baby examples where you don't need to take all the angles, just look at smaller examples. The smallest example of a category where you have non trivial H, a uh, trivial three plus cycle, and you can set up a quasi associativity. I think it would be interesting to, to see that. Um, and um, maybe the other question is that on the category of flat angles, you have monoidal structure, you can just put flat angles in, next to each other. But it's, I guess you're not using this monoidal structure in the, in the, in the construction. Do you know that your co-cycle is non-trivial? Did I miss that? That's, that's what? That you, so you have, you built, you have an associator, which is a co-cycle by the, I think you said it was by the construction of. In the consistency of the. The uh, consistency, yes. Do you know it's not trivial? I guess it would. I mean, I mean, it's not equivalent, right, yeah. in the same class as the... I mean, the, the associator is... Um, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Uh, so, so, so you are wondering if you can, like, uh, if, if you can make your algebra isomorphic to an associative algebra. That's what you I are. suppose, yeah. M Michael has said it um, is not likely, but I'm, do, you, do you know, is it, or is it not known? Oh, right. so, so, you're asking this question about a groupoid, but I think if you just take the tangle with two upper Q kind of the UI tangle in the U tangle in the interpretive algebra composite. If you remove the inner circle, you get it back. So that element is an idempotent; it's not invertible. Mm -hmm. And you have some some shift by Z, but I think in this already case you don't have a group point because your morphism is a trivial tangle. So a tangle with two endpoints at the bottom top is not invertible. It's in fact an idempotent. Well, well, I mean, I don't know about the z, the z direction. You know, plus you also have something in the z direction. Uh, and Christoph has an answer. The associated is trivial when restricted to an algebra, but perhaps not when considered on the whole category. Um. 
um, perhaps not. I get yeah. I mean, you, you, I guess, yeah, you clearly have a non-trivial representative of the co-cycle, right? But No, I'm a bit confused because, um, because, okay. No, I actually don't think that algebra are isomorphic uh, when the associator are related by a co-boundary. I think they are isomorphic uh, if you really have the same associator. Well, so in the deformation case, it is true. I mean, the deform the first order deformations are characterized by the by the cocycles. I mean, if there's an equivalence. Because if I, I, I'm trying to remember. Because, okay, if, if I remember well, the thing is, Basically, because the the, the the homotopy type of your grading category, if you restrict to uh, only identity tangle somehow, is uh, I mean you can contract your space, uh, and so that you can deform your uh, multiplication, and it becomes associative. But the algebra you get in general is not isomorphic to the other algebra in the strategy. If I remember correctly. So I'm not sure now. Well, so maybe we can see if there are more questions. Yes, I'm also wondering about the somatopy type. Uh -huh. That is probably quite untrivial to compute. Yeah, one could look at the homotopy type of just the monoid of and the morphisms of the um, flat angles with two endpoints on each side where you don't change the number of endpoints. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess there's a good question. Yeah. yeah, so in the questions, well, this Federico cycle actually comes from some actually third element of gomology and where we, there are some embedded well, some kind of three manifold that are related to this homology class or maybe map into a three manifold that realizes that the homology class or something of that type uh, well, let's see if there are more questions okay. Okay. well let us thank Gargoire again thank you for listening <laughs>